afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Fenway Park in Boston. With Ned Martin, this is Jim Woods, and this is one for the money. All of it. The big bag of marbles. The second playoff game in the history of the American League, and the Boston Red Sox have been involved in them both. Harking back to 1948. And if there's anything else going on in this world today, I don't know what it is, because this is a baseball mad city, and you can imagine it's the same down in New York. The tickets were all gone for this game by 6 o'clock last night before we ever left the press room here. People all over Kenmore Square and in the various watering holes around this ballpark trying to buy a ticket for love, money, anything they could get. But this is it, baby. The Yankees and the Red Sox, Gidry and Therese for all of it. We'll be back with the starting lineups in a moment. I got it. I got it. And now, there welcomes a very special Red Sox fan, Mrs. Fred Lynn. Glad to have you with us, Dee Dee. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Tell us what you think about Zare. Well, I first became familiar with Zare in Winter Haven, Florida, where we trained. And uh, we spent a lot of time in there during spring training. Are you a Zare shopper yourself? When you live in a hotel, you find that you need little odds and ends. And we found that most anything you might possibly need, you could probably find in. It was a nice store to have so close to the hotel. What else do you like about Zare? There's so many things. I can always find something. Thanks so much for being with us, Mrs. Fred Lynn, and good luck in the playoffs. Thank you very much, and we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping for the best. Remember, you can always count on Zare for real quality and value, and you can charge it. Come into one of our 66 New England stores this week. that will not participate in this championship playoff game today, and that's the talented Willie Randolph, pulled a hamstring a couple of games ago. So the Yankee batting order looks like this. Leading off, playing in center field, Mickey Rivers. The catcher, Thurman Munson. Batting third, the right fielder, Sweet Lou Pinella. The designated hitter, Reggie Jackson. Greg Nettles will be at third. Chris Chambliss, first base. The switcher, Roy White, in left. Brian Doyle will be at second base today. Bucky Dent at shortstop. And Ron Guidry, 24-3, and 2-0, two, oh, two two-hit shutouts against the Boston Red Sox and lifetime, 3-1 and one against Boston. For John Zimmer, Rick Burleson at shortstop. Jerry Remy, second base. Jim Rice in right. Carl Yastrzemski in left. Carlton Fisk catching. Fred Lynn, center field. Butch Hobson, the DH. George Scott at first. Jack Bohammer at third. And Mike Torres, the pitcher. Crowd is standing here at an early hour, and Mr. John Kiley plays our national anthem. this year against the Yankees in lifetime. Big Mike is one in five. He has never gone head-to-head with uh, Guidry this year in the four times he started against the Yankees. The umpiring crew, Don Denkinger calling balls and strikes behind home plate. Jim Evans will be at first base. Al Clark will be at second. And young Steve Palermo will call the plays at third. This place will be bedlam all day long. We might as well right now take our station break. This is the Boston Red Sox Radio Network. 
Cooper Tire is proud of their award-winning dealership in Lowell, Stanfield Tire Center, 402 Chelmsford Street. Cooper is pleased to bring you the Red Sox on WITS Boston. You're in tune with KLBN FM Newton. WRBW and the 92 stations, Kansas City Royal Radio Network, WGR in Buffalo, WAQT FM in Carrollton, that's Butch Hobson's home, WUPY in Ishpeming, Michigan, and of course our good friends WSIR in Winter Haven, Florida, and we got a little of that right in the booth with us. Yeah, we got Mr. Randy well, Jeffrey, president of WSIR, has carried, I guess, 90 to 100 of our games, or maybe even more this year. Uh, down in the central Florida area, we um, unfortunately did not get into tied into WIOD as we had before down in Miami, but it uh, doesn't matter. Somebody along the line somewhere will know what's happening today by radio or television. If they don't, uh, I'll sell them 300 acres of swampland called New Jersey across the river from New York. Was it this crazy here in 67? Yeah. <laughs> It was, and after the game, people were cry climbing up this screen, coming to try to shake hands with Sandy Koufax and Kurt Gowdy, who were next to us doing NBC television. We were here in the booth and wondering if they're going to climb in here, and they had very strange looks on their faces, those kids. And everybody got worried that they were going to drop down there and hurt somebody, but uh, it was about the same, although this is something because this is maybe a little bit more acute because it's the Yankees and not the Minnesota Twins. Well, it's almost impossible to figure it. Gidry has come back and won every big game after a Yankee loss. There's one note in the paper today that interested me that the three games he's lost, a guy named Mike has beaten him in all three. That's right. Flanagan, Willis, and uh, somebody else named Mike. Caldwell of Milwaukee. Yeah. All of them left-handers, of course. And but he's going with three days rest, but he went with three days rest before when he pitched his last good ball game against the Indians. So, uh, it shouldn't be, or Toronto, whatever it was, it shouldn't worry him. And I guess in the way, the kind of year he's had, why well, he's used to this, and uh, it shouldn't flap him, and it certainly won't flap Therese. Well, he told some of our writers, be ready, bring your bags, because we're going to Kansas City. That's where we'll go at around 8 o'clock tonight. I'm glad we don't have the problems that Phil Rizzuto and the Yankee broadcasters do. Just before coming here, the Yankee Bar Club voted that they could not travel on the same plane with them. Is that right? And they're trying to find a way to Kansas City right now. Lovely. Gee, that's something, isn't it? I saw Rizzuto upstairs. He was said, I said, how are you? He said, lousy. <laughs> he felt bad. I think he felt badly about the game yesterday and whatever kind of night he spent, I don't know. But uh, they're here, and the Yankees are here, and it's the team that's been the best team in the American League since the All-Star break, regardless of what it leads up to now. So that's the kind of team you're going against. It's only poetic justice, I think, Jim, that you're going against their best, too, in Ron Guidry. Peter Gammon, Peter Gammon put it well in the press room last night, sitting there meditating what he was going to write, and I thought he wrote a beautiful story about the little word momentum that perhaps all of us in this business overuse, overwork a lot of times. He said, if there is momentum, it belongs to the Boston Red Sox right now. It does, and it happened in a week, too. They won those games in Toronto, those cliffhangers up there, Saturday and Sunday, when it looked as if the whole damn race was over uh, and they did not play that well up there but it was they don't play well on that as what Don Zimmer calls a parking lot on the turf they didn't they were lucky to win but they won and that was the point and then they came back here their home and they were just unbeatable but some of the great games that they played this year were played this past week people that I've talked to there's writers there from all over like Jerome Wilson from Chicago people like that that have talked to Kansas City people and the Royals are rooting like hell for the Boston Red Sox today. Is that right? They would rather play us than uh, the New York Yankees. Well, I think they have a Yankee syndrome there for two years. Bottom of the ninth inning or yeah. top of the ninth inning, fifth game, and they've lost two of them. Even though they'd come to a bigger ballpark and play in a bigger ballpark in the playoffs against New York, I think they'd rather see a change of face down there. The Red Sox haven't done that well either down there. Well, we're not we're carrying our games today, and Sonny Pate, if you're listening, I hope I see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. I hope to, too. I'm going to see him anyway, but I, all of those, all of those Kansas City guys that you get to know so well had a funny kind of year themselves. They've, they've been roller coastering around, and they don't have the momentum right now, but maybe it's good for them. They get a chance to rest George Brett and people like that. I didn't hear the last part of it. Therese has just begun his march from the bullpen towards the stands. Everybody in the ballpark standing up. This crowd is just on the edge, just wanting to turn it loose somehow, some way. 
There is no scoreboard to watch today. We don't have to worry about what the Yankees are doing earlier, what the Milwaukee Brewers were doing. It's been a whole summer of scoreboard watching for, Yan for Red Sox fans after they lost their big lead. Now it's just these two teams and how nice it is to be having the game here in Fenway instead of Yankee Stadium. All the pressure in the world on this big guy walking in right now. He has not had the year that he wanted to have. Went through the long slump, but now he throws this one, the big one against his ex-teammates for all the money. And they're cheering him to the rafters as he walks into the Red Sox dugout. And you don't know what's going through the minds of our guys, but I wish I was a mind reader. You could know what's in the heart and mind of a guy named Carl Yostremski right now. I don't know, but I think, he, think we come close to, to expressing it when we know how much he wants this one and how much he wants the ensuing games in Kansas City and in Los Angeles. That's, that was, that's the whole ball of wax to number eight right now. Next year, he's going to get his 3,000th hit probably. And maybe he'll play after that. Who knows, as a designated hitter or what? But he's become the soul of this ball club, and he's been that way since 1967 when he had the most incredible year of any player on any team I've ever heard of or seen. They did a nice thing in uh, Pittsburgh yesterday, Ned, that Charlie Feeney, their writer, told me about. The race was over. They introduced every Philly player individually and said, this is the team that did it. Then they introduced the Pirates. This is the team that made the great run. And it went over real big with the crowd. Yeah, I read where uh, one of the uh, Philly players, I guess it was uh, oh Harrelson, went over there to their, to their dressing room he, to say goodbye and congratulations. And he said that Willie Stargell bought him a half a bottle of champagne. <laughs> No chicken? <laughs> no chicken, just a champagne bottle. But that was a good race over there. That's the way this, this crazy game boils down. Uh, football has its Super Sunday, and a lot of times that has not been as much fun as the playoffs. Here it goes down to uh, a, a playoff before a playoff. And maybe after this, here come the Red Sox. Carlson to short, Remy to second, Scott to first. The left fielder is Carl Yastrzemski. In center is Freddie Lynn. Jim Rice is in right. Carl the fifth is behind the plate. And on the mound, the big right-hander from Topeka, Kansas, Mike Torres. In the coaching line for the Yankees, Dick Hauser is at third. Gene the stick, Michael, is down at first. We are ready for the second time in American League history for a championship playoff game and ready to turn this whole thing over to Ned Martin. I can't hear you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it looks beautiful out there now. The Red Sox white uniform, stark against the green. The brown of the infield looking fresh and clean. Everybody up in this jam-packed house on a perfect baseball afternoon at Fenway Park with people on the roof we've never seen before out to the left of the auxiliary scoreboard on either side, in left field anyway, photographers on the right side, press and radio people and media people from all over have come to this place, the sinusure of all sports eyes on this Monday, a Monday afternoon game that uh, people will remember for a long, long time. We talked to Jack Brohammer before the game. He said, I've never been in anything like this before. He said yesterday when he caught the foul ball, he was so hyped that he thought he could leap eight feet up. He said, By the, when I'm playing with Cleveland and Chicago, it's all over. You know, we're just trying to want to get home. But he said, this is something special. Well, he tucked that last ball under his arm and stuck out his hand like he was Peyton on a wide sweep. It looks, right. It looks like Ricky Bell going for the goal line. He wanted to get it in there to give to Louis Tiot, is what he did. He gave the game ball to Louis, and he said it was such a pleasure playing behind this man who's done it so many times. Well, he's playing behind a guy that did it last year for the New York Yankees, the team he wants to beat today, Mike Torres. Started well and went into a dip toward the middle of the season and toward the end. We have a... Co-winners of the American League Player of the Week, the final vote, which they do every year, every week of the season. Co-winners, Boston's Dennis Eckersley and New York's Ed Figueroa. Both of them won their 20th game two days ago. Mickey Rivers will lead it off. The Yankee center fielder who means so much to this ball club. A 264 hitter this season. 11 home runs and 48 RBIs. 
can fly is always a bunt threat, and he keeps uh, Brohammer right in on the grass now. And here he is to face last year's teammate, Mike Therese, one more time. Here it is for everything. Brohammer in close. Scott is even with a bag at first. Burleson and Remy push up at short and second, a couple of steps, respecting Rivers' speed. Therese gets the sign from Carlton Fisk, throws, and the first pitch is low inside, ball one. We're underway at Fenway Park. One ball, no strike to Rivers. Outfield, a step toward right. Long look by Mike Torres. Throws and knocks him back from the plate with a chin-high pitch, ball two. Two and nothing. Rivers, Munson, and Pinella up this inning. Two balls, no strikes. Rivers leading off the ball game, and that bent crouch takes ball three. Rivers is the kind of guy that doesn't walk much. He swings at almost anything, but in this game, he's now 3-0. and He has walked only 27 times this year in 557 times at bat, plus the 27 walks. 3-0. and He'll be taking, I would imagine. He does, and it's ball four. It's high. Therese walks the first batter to face it. Rivers at first base. And, of course, always a uh, threat to go, go, go. Rivers has stolen 23 bases out of 28 times this year. Willie Randolph, who's unable to play with a hamstring pull, leads the Yankees in stolen bases with 36. And here's the guts of the ball club. Any year, Thurman Munson, the catcher. Snarly, a little bit surly, but one heck of a ball player who hit, is hitting 297. All the statistics that happen in this game are added to the regular ones, and they count in the season-long statistics. So Munson, as well as Freddie Lynn on the Red Sox side, each has a chance to hit the 300 mark. Lynn is batting 298, Munson 297. Six homers, 70 RBIs for Thurman this year. He's been hurt most of the season. Rivers off first, four steps. The pitch, there he goes. It's high for a ball. Throw down to second base. He is safe. Stolen base, Mickey Rivers. Went on the first pitch from Torres. Number 24 for Rivers. Got in under the throw from Carlton Fisk to Jerry Remy. So Rivers is in scoring position for Munson. Teachers, the bleachers just chock full of people. No place for anybody else. Everything was sold out yesterday. People came down here at 8.30 this morning hoping for anybody who wanted to sell tickets. Count is one ball, no strikes to Munson. Therese comes on with a pitch, and it's a strike swinging. He tried to check, but could not. It was a slider that got him. One ball, one strike. Munson, the guy who caught Therese all last season and through the World Series. Thurman goes through a, a lot of, a, a great many ablutions of the plate himself, like Fisk. Outside, ball two. It is two balls, one strike to Munson. The wind is not a hitter's wind today. It's blowing in from left, from second toward first, toward the first baseline, sometimes toward the right field foul pole. Here's the pitch to Munson. Swinging, strike two. As Therese straightens him up with an inside pitch. It is two and two to Munson. Lou Pinella on deck. Munson steps back again. Swings the bat back and forth, waiting for the 2-2 pitch from Torres. Here it comes. Check swing is low behind Fisk, but Rivers holds. Three balls, two strikes. Rivers wasn't that far off the bag. Remy, kidding with Rivers at second base, came over and pretended to tag him with his hand. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Just underway. Mickey Rivers at second. Munson at the plate. The look in. The nod of the head. And a pickoff attempt at second, not quite. Rivers ducks back in behind Burleson, who went in behind him and took the throw from Therese on a count play, but it 
not quite in motion. Bob Stanley is in the bullpen for the Red Sox, just in case. Munson strikes out swinging. Big strikeout for Mike Torres as he fed Munson breaking stuff to strike him out. There is one down. The batter, Lou Pinella. Right fielder hitting 314. Sweet Lou and the Yankee fans in the stands are shouting Lou, Lou, Lou. Pinella has six homers and 69 RBIs on the season. He, too, very important in the Yankee scheme of things. Rivers at second base. And Bob Stanley is up and throwing much more out there. May have to scratch him as a starter if they play tomorrow in Kansas City. Pinella hits the ground ball left side. Brohammer holds Rivers. Throws to first. Two out. Jack Brohammer, third baseman, making the play off to his left. And now there are two away to Reggie Jackson. And they're not shouting Lou, Lou, Lou here. The Red Sox fans getting on September's child now playing in October. He was October's child last year in the World Series. Reggie on the season, hitting 274. He's the designated hitter. He is talking with Carlton Fisk. He talks with everybody. 26 home runs, 96 runs batted in. Two outs and Rivers still at second. Therese, who Don Zimmer has said all season long, is my best pitcher for getting out of jams, even though he creates them himself. In a mild one here, but not as big as it was two batters ago. Here it comes. High fly ball, left field. Yaz over toward the wall. Thinks he has a shot at it. He does. He's got it. The inning is over. And we go to the bottom of the first. Yankees nothing. The Red Sox coming up. Ronald Guidry, the Ragin' Cajun from Louisiana, on the mound. The best pitcher of the year in all of baseball and a certain Cy Young Award winner. Even buying for most valuable player award with Jim Rice of Boston. Gidry has had the dream year. 24 wins, three losses. Three guys that beat him were all named Mike. Oddly enough, Mike Flanagan of Baltimore, Mike Caldwell of Milwaukee, and Mike Willis of Toronto, all left-handers. Gidry is facing Mike Perez today, a right-hander. Here's Rick Burleson. And the pitch is swung on and foul back strike one. Burley hitting 248. Five home runs and 49 runs batted in. Nothing, nothing ball game. That shot by Jackson was pretty long, and Yaz scrapes the ball with his shoulder on it. A breaking pitch, a slider by Gidry, called ball one. One ball, one strike. Gidry has the rising fastball and the hard slider. Strike swinging. One ball, two strikes. He has shut out the Red Sox the last two times he has faced them. Once here, once in Yankee Stadium. Strike three call. Burleson's out, and he's going to kick to Denkinger on that. Slight wrinkle on the slider. Strike out for Gidry. One away. You have problems on selling your product or advertising for your product. Why don't you use the yellow pages of your telephone directory? One out, and Jerry Remy up. He's been a factor these last couple of weeks. Takes inside, ball one. Remy, the second baseman, a left-handed batter, hitting 276, two home runs, and 44 runs batted in. He pulls one high into shallow left field. Roy White is there coming in, and he has it for out number two. The confrontation now between two vying for the most valuable player award this year, Ron Guidry and Boston's Jim Wright. Awesome statistics for Wright. A 315 batting average, 46 home runs, 138 runs batted in. He has faced Gidry eight times this year and has not had a hit against him. 0 for 8 against Gidry. 
We'll see how they fare this afternoon. Here's the pitch. Strike swing is Rid Ridley just jammed him with hard stuff. Rice leads the league in triples. He leads the world in just about everything offensively. He swings and misses at another Gidry fastball that seemed to rise out of the strike zone. He can come in with that fastball and start it shoulder high. It fails, and you go for it, and there you are. Ball inside. One ball, two strikes. Right here, it is power against power. Rice took extra hitting after the game was won yesterday. Went out into the stands in center field. One-two pitch. Ball outside, and it's two and two. Bullpens are full of people today. They're ran out of tomorrow's today. Everybody can be used. Strike three, swinging a breaking pitch, and it's one, two, three, a powerful inning for Gidry. After one inning, no score. The wind seems to have changed right now. It's gone and done an about face and a rear march, and it's going out toward left. It could be that it could be a hitter's wind toward the wall after all. It is blowing from right to left toward the left field corner. And the sun has started to come out again here at Fenway Park in Boston. Nothing, nothing ball game. They are telling people to remove signs from the back wall in center over the triangle where it could possibly interfere with a batter's vision. Especially if you're looking at the Gidry fastball, I would think, yes, signs should be removed. Nettles is waiting for them to do it. They are reluctant to take them down because they say we're number one on them and things like that. The rest of the signs over toward right and, and uh, right center, okay, they're way high up on the board and in no da danger of getting in anybody's eyes or way. Most of them nailed up there with spikes, all the trouble having getting them down. I don't know what they put them in there with, a sledgehammer and pile drivers. They still won't take down the signs. One of them has been taken down, but they're going to hold it up anyway. And the other people are rather adamant about keeping theirs up. And the game is being held up while we're having trouble. And there's an, an attendant has gone up to uh, attend to the matter. And down it comes. Greg Nettles will lead off against Therese, third baseman for the Yankees. Excellent third baseman, a terrific uh, clutch player, hitting 278 on the year with 27 home runs and 93 runs batted in. One of the best mistake hitters in the American League. Hang one on him and he can lose it for you. Therese straightens him up with a fastball up and in. One ball, no strikes. Freddie Lynn in center is several steps over toward right center. Yastrzemski way over toward Lynn, toward left center, and they give Nettles a left field line. And he hits a high pop-up, shortstop way. Burleson back on the grass. Rick waiting, and he puts it away for the first out. <laughs> Nettles pops to short. The last time the Yankees played the four-game shootout here and just absolutely blew the Red Sox out of the American League almost, they did a lot of opposite field hitting. They did not go for the home runs. They were hitting crisp singles to left and right from opposite field hitters. Shambliss is up. Left-handed hitting first baseman, batting 274. He looks at a curveball down and in, ball one. Shambliss has 12 home runs and 90 runs batted in. Now the pitch. Good pitch for a called strike, an off-speed breaking ball. One and one to Chris, the quiet man on the Yankees, along with really, well, when Willie Randolph is in there, there's not one word spoken on the right side of the Yankee infield, both quiet fellas. There's a drive to Scott at first base for the out. Line drive out to George Scott. We'll pause there for station identification on the Red Sox radio network. And you're in tune with KLBN 95.9 in Newton, Iowa. Roy White, the switch-hitting left fielder coming up for New York. White is hitting 268, eight homers and 42 RBIs, batting left against Torres. Two outs in the Yankees' second scoreless game. Inside to White, spins away from it, ball one. 
There has not been a hit yet. There's just been one base runner. First batter of the game, Mickey Rivers, with a walk. 1-0 pitch. Big swing by White. One ball, one strike. If you're thinking this fall of going to Florida, why don't you take your family to Disney World? Crimson Travel. Call them in Boston at 7428500. Foul ball off the bat of White. One ball, two strikes. One and two to White with two out. Therese working with excellent pace. Throws and White strikes out, swinging. That ends the inning, and we go to the bottom of the second. No score. We're going to Papa Gino's, right? Right. So we'll all have to get pizza, right? Wrong. What you like is what you get. But what if I want a hamburger? That's, That's what you get. get. Or a hot dog and a Coke? That's, That's what, what you get. get. And what if I want a big hot pizza pie with green peppers and onions and sausage and mushrooms? That's, That's what, what you get. get. A tremendous standing ovation for the man that when you mentioned baseball in Boston the last 18 years, you mentioned Carl Yastrzemski. He's up. Everybody up in the ballpark paying tribute to the captain of the Red Sox who is hitting 276 with 16 homers and 79 runs batted in. And there's nobody more up with it right now to get into this game than you strip. He takes a fighter from Gidry for a called strike. He has had some year. He's 39 years old. Played uh, two months with a bad wrist, bad back. It's a long drive. Right field. It's maybe out of here. It is a fair ball home run. Red Sox lead 1-0. designated hitter. 
batting 250. 17 home runs, swings wildly and misses strike one. Bush has knocked in 80 runs. A very aggressive, go for broke kind of hitter. Ground ball to third. Nettles up with it on a trap hop and throws him out at first base. One run for the Red Sox. We go to the third. One nothing Boston. Thank you, Dad, and one of the Doyle boys. Brian by name, brother of Denny, and one of the Doyle twins. He's been up three times against the uh, Red Sox this year. Has failed to hit. Overall, he's batting at 200. He doesn't have any home runs, doesn't have any RBIs, because he hasn't played very much and wouldn't be playing today had Willie Randolph not injured himself a couple of nights ago. Torres with a run to work with. The outfield is straight away. Brohammer in tight at third. High fly ball out toward right field. Back goes Remy. In comes Rice. And Jerry Remy makes the catch. So one away on Torres' first pitch of this, the top half of the third inning. Bucky Dent now, and he has had a good year against Boston pitching. 11 for 35, 314. He's had a home run, and he's knocked in nine. Overall, he hits the 243 with four home runs and 37 batted in. Wind is ever shifting today. It's a little bit out over the left field wall again now. Lynn a step, step and a half toward left center. Torres Sterles in a high breaking ball, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Stanley has been up once when Torres was a little wild in the first inning. Good breaking pitch outside corner, one and one, and Dent looks around at Denkinger. Mike with only one career victory against this ball club that he wants to pitch for. Pitching out of bright sunlight, sails it in high, two balls and a strike. Kansas City is waiting for the winner tomorrow night. 7.30, Kansas City time, 8.30 in the east. The ball punched out into right center field. May drop, may drop, and right got there. The Red Sox have made only one error in this eight-game streak, and that was a boot by Jerry Remy yesterday. They've just leathered the opposition to death. And Rice playing in the unfamiliar position of right field just kept on coming. Fred Lynn says a word to him as he goes back. Two out here in the top of the third. And Mickey Rivers, who's been the Yankees' only base runner, walking on four straight pitches at the outset of the ball game, then stealing second and being stranded there. Rohammer way in at third. Four full steps in on the grass. Two outs, third inning. Red Sox leading one to nothing. Torres works for a hammering swing and the hot dog clip of the bat that Rivers is famous for. No balls and a strike. Scott's in a little bit at first, too. Crowded him in under the chin whiskers. One ball, one strike. Not an empty seat to be seen. Roof full of press people. They're on buildings out beyond the left field wall. Line drive, face hit down into the right field corner. The ball hits the stands there and does Rivers on his way to second, and he goes into the first Yankee hit a double. hit off Mike Torres. A sizzling shot there by a couple of feet. So the tying run reaches second base with two men out and Thurman Munson from the batter. Went down swinging on a 3-2 pitch in the first inning. Two harmless outs and then Rivers got all of it that he wanted. Rice had no chance for any kind of a play on him at second base as the ball just hit the box seat rating and rolled dead in shallow right. So Torres faces on the first moment of truth here for him now. Puts the dangerous Munson up there. Remy, a bluff run at Rivers. He's got a long lead. Here's the pitch. And a high foul puts him back and out of play for a strike. Thurman not attacking that ball in his usual fashion, just trying to meet it and poke it someplace to get Rivers home. One strike on Thurman. Both dugouts a little bit alive today, my friends. And a tenseness that's not there during the regular season. And why should there not be? Into the dirt, and nice block by Phipps. Pitch got away from Torres. Bit rickety out in front of the plate, and Fisk got his big body in front of it. One ball, one strike on the Yankee catcher. 
two weeks ago when they flipped the coin in regard to where we would play this game if it was to be played. Nobody thought much about it. Well, it's nice Boston won, but here we are. And I'll tell you, I'd rather be here than the jungle at a Shanky Stadium. These are friendly folk. One ball, one strike, two out. Torres taking a long stare at Munson, who used to be his battery mate. Pitch line foul right field side. A ripping shot. Nowhere near fair territory. And the count on Munson goes to a ball and two strikes. Little did I ever know when I was a teammate of Mike for the St. Louis Cardinals that I'd be sitting there watching and talking about a ball game like this he's pitching him. eight long years ago. Torres set for the one-two pitch to Munson. Brings it into the big catcher and he saves it, I think. No appeal. Munson did everything but swing at it but kept the wrist tight. Two balls, two strikes. Tonello's on deck. Playing in right field today with Reggie Jackson acting as the D.H. Torres with a nonchalant glance back at Rivers. Burleson sneaking in behind him. Here's the pitch now. Swing on and this ball drop. Fisk is going to play it on down to Scott for the out. We go to the last half of the third inning. one nothing Boston. George Scott leads off here in the last half of the third inning. Against Yankee pitching this year, Scott is 8 for 41 with a 195 average. Got a home run against the Yankees, and he's driven in four. The faces the famed Louisiana Lightning of Ron Guidry. The young left-hander spins it in, and George leans away from a Guidry fastball. One ball and no strikes. George overall at 230 with 12 home runs, 54 batted in. Long drive by Scott. Deep center field. Rivers is back, back, and it's off the wall. Scott's on his way to second base. And he'll go in sliding with a double. The boomer ripped one to the left to the center field. Rivers is now coming in. I can't believe Rivers went out there without any sunglasses. But then again, I can. The ball didn't really hit that high up on the wall. And that's what Rivers came in to get, is some sunglasses. Now Mickey on his way out again for the Red Sox. Have a big run at second base. Nobody out, and Jack Brohammer the batter. Brohammer this year is 3 for 24, a 125 average against New York pitching, and he's driven in three runs. Nettles on to talk to Guidry. Shambliss comes up at first. Nettles very close to the bag at third. And George will have to... Get off and running if Rimmer is running in this situation. Sambler stays in, parallel with the bag, and the ball is butted. And picked up, once and bust towards third, goes to first in time. Two to three on a perfect sacrifice by Brohammer. Moving Scott over to third. And bringing up Rick Burleson. called out on strikes in the first inning. He didn't think so and had a few words with Dinkinger about it. Good bunt by Brohammer. He's been a big factor in this great eight-game drive the Red Sox have put on that has carried in on this one-game playoff with the Yankees. Lemon brings his infield up. Nettles, Dent. Chambliss. Brian on the other side, and the pitch to Burleson is down low for a ball. One and over count. Doyle only about 
two steps off the ground. Shamblis the same. Here's the pitch. Low again, ball two. And Burleson immediately wants the ball looked at. You know, your family always deserves the best, and when it comes to ham, they deserve Colonial. Colonial, the number one selling ham in all New England. Two-nothing on Burleson. The pitch, a bouncing ball to third. They drive Scott back, and he throws Burleson out. Nettles to Shambler. So they did not get the fly ball that they had to have right there. And now it'll take the misplay or the base hit by Remy. Remy fly to left his first time up. One to nothing. Boston leading third inning on a Carl Yuskowski home run. Way in in center is Rivers. Manella now coming up a few steps in right. Fly ball out towards left center. Here comes White. Here comes Rivers. And Roy White makes the catch. We go to the fourth inning. One nothing Boston. If the Red Sox survive here today, it's Kansas City tomorrow night and Wednesday afternoon. And back here for an off day Thursday. A Friday afternoon game and night game Saturday and Sunday if necessary. Now the ball is going to be examined at the request of Mr. Pinella. The commissioner is here today, president of the American League. Mr. Lee McPhail, chairman of the board, Mr. Joe Cronin. They're all here today. Torres looking in. Plate is still in bright sunshine, too. And nobody in the shadows yet. Fastball over the outside corner. Call strike one. Nothing and one to count. Red Sox leading one to nothing. And we're in the fourth. Ground ball hit down and off the glove of Burleson. It'll be a base hit. Rohammer threw himself at the ball. He couldn't come up with it, and Burleson tried to backhand it and just succeeded in knocking it down. Hit number two off Mike Torres, and the Yankees have their leadoff batter on for the second time in the game. And here's Reggie, who pinned Yastrzemski to the wall down towards the corner. His first time up going to the opposite field. Reggie Jackson, September's child, but this is October. Hammer in a little bit of third, wide of the line. Burleson overshifted a step or two towards second. Pinello with a tying run against Scott Cole there, and Reggie takes a ball down and in on the left-hand batter. One ball, no strikes. Reggie wound up with 26 home runs and almost 100 knocked in, 96 to be exact about it. A look over the shoulder by the big Kansan. There's a drive, right field, right there, right there to get it. Hard hit ball by Jackson, the throw back to first, almost doubled up Pinella, who went in there very nonchalantly. And a strong, strong throw by Jimmy Wright, very nearly nailed him. A hard hit out by Reggie. And here's Greg Nettle. Popped up to Burleson in shallow left field his first time up. And he's looking around at shadows and things. Right, just a perfect position for Jackson that time. Because the ball got out there in a hurry. And it's been a couple of feet to either side. He wouldn't have had time to move for it. Pinella at first, one out. one nothing. Boston in the fourth. Torres cuts it loose high to Greg, and it's a ball. One ball and no strikes. Shambles will be next. A weird, weird ending. With everybody packed to go various places, and nobody knows who's going where. Lynn playing Nettles just about where he played Jackson, a step or so toward right center. And he has a little off the middle of the scoreboard in left. Short lead by Pinella. Torres is pitch. Punched out into shallow left field. Burleson on the move, and he runs it down for the out. We'll pause here for station identification on the Boston Red Sox radio network. HSC has 22 offices in the greater Boston area, also offices throughout Massachusetts and New Hampshire. 
See your phone book for the address of the office nearest you. WITS, Boston. Chris Shambliss up for the second time. He had a good rip his first time up, but right at a big man down at first base for the name of George Scott. It was right at him, and the boomer tucked it away. So Pinella, who let it off with the infield hit, still at first base, two down. Yankees won the seasonal series with that last spurt of theirs, eight games to seven. When they took uh, six out of the last seven games the two teams played. Torres works, ground ball up the middle, Burleson's right there, steps on second. For the fourth out of Pinella, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. one nothing, Red Sox. If you drive along the highway or make tracks across the snow, even biking across the country, Champion is the way to go. If you go across the skyway or go cruising out the sea, if you're into racing, go hard. Champion is the plug you need. lawn gets longer the time it takes you to start your power mower. Replace that old worn spark plug with a fresh Champion plug. Champion can give your power mower faster starts and better performance. And you'll have the time to enjoy summer. For a power mower that starts faster and performs better, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug. Just being here, and by deed. 
2 0 pitch. Ripped out, foul back to Diaz, goes to his knees. 2 and 1 the count. Man, alive did he have a cut. Two balls and a strike on your strength, Dean out, nobody on. 1 to nothing, Boston. We're in the last half of any number four. Didry brings it in. And it's rattled foul over here with the on-deck circle where Fisk is standing. So the count is even now on the leader. Two balls and two strikes. You'll be reading all about this one tomorrow in the Boston Globe. Just call 929-2222 for home delivery. The Globe. Didry's given up two hits, the home run and the double by Scott. He works the Yastrzemski. And yeah, it's out. He went after a bad pitch, down and away. That is strikeout number three for Gidry. So he gets the measure of Yastrzemski this time, and now the deal with Carlton Fisk. Five deep to left his first time up. When the wind was blowing in. Going out a little bit now. Two outs and nobody on. Waiting for Fisk to go through all the maneuvers that he goes through before standing in the batter's box. All right, Pudge finally set, and Gidry set for him. Works to the big catcher and fires a strike at the knees. Nothing in one. Gidry, for the most part, staying with the pitches that have gotten him the 24-3 record. The hard slider and the blazing fastball. Pitch to Pudge is ripped out, fouled over the roof, straight back over the press box. It is packed today, baby. You can't even move in there. Two quick strikes on Fisk. Two outs, nobody on. Red Sox one, the Yankees nothing. Last half of any number four. Again, Gidry is forced to wait while Fisk took a half step back out of the batter's box. Now the two-strike delivery. Fly ball, deep center field. Rivers going back. Back, and it's a warning track. He's got it. We go to the fifth inning. one nothing Red Sox. The Red Sox have hit some tremendous shots off Gidry this afternoon, including the one that Fifth just uh, hit to retire the side. But so far, the only one that has counted is that by Gaz. We're in the fifth. Here's Ned. All right, top of the fifth inning. And Roy White. Brian Doyle and Bucky Dent, the lower third of the Yankee order, coming up against Big Taco, Mike Perez, who has pitched one hit baseball so far. He's given up a double to Mickey Rivers, and, uh, well, two hits now, a single, an infield hit to Lou Pinella. Bending over at the plate, Roy White. Takes high, ball one. White struck out, swinging in the second. Now Torres kicks and throws and jams him inside. Ball one, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Two and nothing to White. Torres has walked just one in the game. That was Rivers opening the ball game. Rivers stole second. Nobody out, but stayed there. Rivers got the double and stayed at second in the third inning. There's a ball inside, and it's 3-0. and 3 and nothing to White. Grandstand shadow coming across just behind the people at the plate now. Batter, catcher, and umpire. Watch out. Ball four came in tight and high, and there's a walk to open the Yankee fifth inning. Brian Doyle up. Doyle popped up to second base in the third inning. He's had 10 hits and 51 times at bat this year for New York. Fred Stanley, a lot of people thought he might play with a chicken having competitive experience in World Series and playoffs, but uh, Bob Lemon going for the left-handed batter against the right-handed pitcher, I guess, in this one, playing the book. Now, Brohammer is close in at third. Although the Yankees are trailing by a run, they figure that the number eight hitter, Doyle, may be bunning. He's not, though, on this one. He takes a strike. 
left-handed batter, younger brother of Denny Doyle, who performed so well for a couple of years with the Red Sox. Has a twin, Blake Doyle, in the Baltimore organization. the 0-1 delivery, runner taking off, ground ball to Remy, he'll have to go to first with it, White reaches second, there's one out, they had him hitting away when hitting and running with White, and the ball was to Remy's left, and he saw he had no play at all to second, and the Yankees have the tying run in scoring position with one out, Doyle is out, second to first, White at second, and Bucky Dent is up. Dent had a good series, a couple of good series against the Red Sox, particularly up here, when they won four straight. In this game, he has been up once, fly out to right field. Right-handed batter, chokes well up on the bat. The single type of hitter. Wide off second, Remy bluffing him toward the bag. There's a little pop-up, back of second base. And shielding his eyes is Burleson, he has it. They've got two out now. So Dent pops up to short. The runner remains at second, and the hitter is Mickey Rivers. Been the only one to really consistently do anything against Torres. Fisk goes out to talk to Mike. Rivers has walked and doubled. Double down, double to right field in the third. He walked in the first. Tying run at second base. We're in the fifth inning, about halfway through this ball game, with the Red Sox leading the Yankees one to nothing in the tiebreaker playoff to see who gets to ride the plane to Kansas City tonight. Rivers crouched over at the plate, busy bat, waiting for Therese's pitch. The pause and the delivery. Ground ball towards short. And Burleson will go to third, and they've got a play there. He's out at third. Burleson goes to Brohammer, and they put out Roy White sliding into third to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Boston won. New York, nothing. Ron Guidry trailing in the ball game, one to nothing on Yastrzemski's second inning home run. Ready to pitch to the Red Sox in the bottom of the fifth. He'll go against Lynn, Hobson, and Scott. Two hitter so far for each pitcher. The big one, the hit by Yastrzemski, the home run down the right field line. Otherwise, it's been about as billed. A highly competitive ball game between the two best teams in the American League. Fred Lynn up, fly deep to center field. The Rivers who took it on the edge of the warning pass in the second inning. Red Sox have been hitting some pretty good shots off Gidry, making good contact. High fly balls to deep parts of the ballpark. Gidry has fanned three. He has not walked anyone. Slim right-hander from Louisiana. Left-hander winds and throws, and it's outside, ball one. One ball, no strike. Pitch by Guidry. Check swing, grounder to Guidry. Makes a nice stop, going to his knees. Throws Lynn out. Good play by Guidry on good reaction. Ground ball was hit pretty hard off a check swing. It is now Butch Hobson at the plate. Hobson grounded to third base in the second. Nettles deep at third. Ditto dented shortstop toward the hole. Brian Doyle on the edge of the outfield grass at his position at second. Champ was very wide of the bag at first. Strike called at the knees. Outfield straight away. Rivers a relatively shallow center. But White deep in left. Inside with the fastball. One and one. Pinella is playing a deep right field. Flag fairly limp in center field now. Breeze not a factor. Ground ball to Nettles. Backhands the ball. It goes off his glove into shallow left field. Hobson turns and holds the ball. Fielded by White. It'll go as a base hit. A tough hopper to third. Nettles a... Uh, Fine third baseman, could not handle it. So it's a one-out single for Hobson. George Scott coming up. Doubled off the center field wall in the third. 
That is the third Red Sox hit. One out, a runner at first. Scott up with Brohammer on deck. Gidry looks toward first. Pitches to Scott, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. Doyle at second, and dead at short, a double play depth, deep double play depth, with uh, Scott the runner from the plate. High, ball one. One ball, one strike. One and one count to George Scott. Gidry's pitch. Fouled off a vicious cut by the boomer and fouled into the mask or chest protector of umpire Denkinger. It's one and two to Scott. Gidry leans in. Takes Munson's sign. Hobson a short lead off first. One two pitch to Scott. Truck came out. A big cut by the boomer, and he's out on strikes, and that's for number four for Ron Guidry. Brohammer. Jack Brohammer up, laid down a good sacrifice bunt in the third inning, getting Scott to third with one out, but the Red Sox could not play. Hobson at first base, two away. Red Sox one, Yankees nothing, fifth inning. Guidry fires, and a check swing on a curve ball outside, ball one. Top of the order, Burleson on deck. Get re ready. Pitches. Strike call. Fastball picked up the outside flight. And it's one ball, one strike to Brohammer. Get re looking straight at Hobson. Comes in with a pitch and misses outside and low. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, two out. Here's the set and the pitch. And there's a fly ball to left field. Roy White under it, in left. He has got it, and that's all for the Red Sox. We go to the sixth inning, one nothing, Boston. Mike is pitching... Beautifully today, as he was in his last start at one nothing shutout over Detroit. Thurman Munson has looked bad on two times up. He has struck out twice. Breaking stuff getting him each time. Now Thurman moves in. Lynn a step toward left center. Stramski straight away and left. Same with Rice and Rice. Munson hits the ground foul off to the left side. Strike one. The Yankees behind in this one, one nothing. They were behind half the season and way behind until they started their July and August run, which brought them into first place in September. Here it is. Munson and cracks a little ground foul again to the left side. He was going out after a breaking ball and tried to pull it in this little rubber foul. Nothing in two. No balls, two strikes to Thurman Munson, leading off the sixth inning. Here it comes. Check swing. Did he get it? They check off with the first base off. Fire strike three. Jim Evans says, yes, he went around on it. And Munson just stood and looked down the line at the first base umpire, Jim Evans. Jenkinger was blocked from view on the check swing. But the first base umpire saw it, and that's three times that Munson has struck out. Something unusual there. strikeouts for Therese, and three of them have been Munson. One out. 
Lou Pinella has one for two, an infield single in the fourth. And the pitch to Sweet Lou is hammered deep toward right center field. Lynn going back, still going back, has it in his eyes, and he's got it for the out. On the triangle of dirt in 400-foot territory in center field. Pinella is out. Two away. Reggie Jackson coming up. Well, if you're nervous about this ball game, wherever you are, why don't you just relax with a bottle of Budweiser. Budweiser, the king of beers. It goes with baseball any month of the year. Jackson has slide to left and line to right. Perez ready. Delivers. Ground ball to Remy. Second base. Takes it. Throws him out. That's all. One, two, three inning. Bottom of the six coming up. Boston one, New York nothing. We're back at Fenway Park in Boston where the Red Sox lead the Yankees one to nothing in the playoff for the pennant, American League 1978. Rick Burleson first up against Ron Guidry who's made only one mistake but so far it has put him behind. He threw a home run ball to Kyle Yastrzemski in the second. Burleson is 0 for 2, struck out and grounded out. Gidry goes to work. Strike swinging. Ron has fanned four in this game, has not walked anyone. He and Therese locked up in a dandy. One strike pitch to the rooster. Swinging strike, and the count is 0-2. Burleson, Remy, and Rice up this inning. Gidry takes the breath. Comes in with a two-strike pitch. Lifted foul out of play by Burley. Nothing in two. The grandstand shadow now has enveloped the batter and catcher. It's run along the third base line out toward left, but everybody else is still in sunlight. The October sun at Fenway. And a tough right field to play for everybody out there. There's a line drive. Base hit down the left field line. Into the corner. Safe by Roy White. Burleson's going for two. He's got a stand-up double. and just hung in there. Got two quick strikes on him and fouled off a couple of tough pitches and then reached for an outside pitch and pulled it down the left field line. Burleson with an insurance run at second base and nobody out. Jerry Remy up. He has slide twice to left field. Gidry being talked to by Nettles. Treat your car this fall to Getty Unleaded Regular Gasoline. Gives your car the kind of performance you used to get before gasolines became unleaded. Get it. Rich Gossage is up in the bullpen. Pitch to Remy. He's going to bunt. Takes low. Ball one. They're looking for it. Shambles in about to shake hands with Remy. He's that close. On Remy, you've got a guard against the good drag bunt up the right side. Get reworks to Remy. Front toward third. Makes Nettles play it. Over to first base in time. But they've got a runner at third with one out. Good punt by Remy. He dropped it down the third base line and made Nettles play it. That, of course, leaves third base uncovered. Jim Rice is up. Play went five to four. Burleson goes to third, representing a very big insurance run here. The Yankees must bring the infield in to pitch to Jim Rice. Rice has struck out and grounded to short. Gidry faced with an enormous challenge now with Rice up there and a drawn-in infield. Yastrzemski on deck. The pitch to Jim is foul back, strike one. He's been up there swinging all day long. Nothing in one. Win not a factor right now. Dent is three steps off the grass at short. Doyle two steps off at second. Chandless about three steps off, wide and even with a bag at first. Here it comes to right. And the base hit to center field. Let's see. Yep. Base hit. And here comes Burleson with a second run. Do nothing, Boston. It's a hard 
Line drive single to center. For a minute, it appeared that Rivers might try to charge it and try to shoestring it. He made a decoy, the ball hit in front of him, and he almost let it get behind him. It's an RBI for Jim Rice, his 139th of the year. One out, Rice at first base. Red Sox with a precious run, leading two to nothing in the sixth inning. Yastrzemski up, has homered and struck out. Pitch is high to him, ball one. The fans are charging and grooving here at Fenway Park. A tremendous roar when the Red Sox even come close to scoring. And of course, that did it there. And a ground ball to first. Chambliss cannot make the play at second. Stepped on the bag at first for the out. Two down, but Wright goes to second base. Bob Lemon coming out of the Yankee dugout. Headed for the mound. The batter will be Carlton Fitz. The situation has Rice at second base and first base open. Fisk, a right-handed batter, to be followed by Lynn, a left-handed batter. Lynn is 0 for 2, and so is Fisk, but each has had a hard out to center field. This is not to be a move to the bullpen, I don't believe. Lemon is talking with Munson and with Gidry. Now, here comes Denkinger out to break it up. Maybe it is. A win. No, that's it. Conference is over. And Lemon has made his decision and has waited long so that he can uh, relax Gidry and also give Gossage a couple of more pitches out in right field. Carlton Fisk in this one has slide to left and slide very deep to center. Made uh, good contact each time. Red Sox two, Yankees nothing in the six. Just another ho another ho hum game from Fenway Park. They are going to walk fifth. They'll go with a book and pitch to the left-handed hitting Lynn. That's the strategy dictated by Bob Lemon together with his battery. And this will be the first walk given up by Ron Guidry. This will be put on first. They'll pitch to the left-handed hitting Lynn, who is 0 for 2, but he also has fly deep to center field. The other time up, Lynn grounded out on a check swing, grounded out to Gidry. There is ball four, and Fisk is on. Rice at second, Fisk at first, and Fred Lynn up. Lynn 0 for 2, batting right now at 297. Gidry is fan four this afternoon, and that was the first walk, the intentional one, that he has given up. Lynn the batter with Hobson on deck. And Ronald Gidry leans in for the side. Check right at second. Pitches to Lynn. Check swing at low, ball one. Ball, no strike. Rice with a good lead off second base. Here comes. Fly ball going foul down into the crowd and left. Bouncing around amongst the folks. It's one ball, one strike as Lynn went with the pitch. Gossage should be warm in this October sunshine in right field. Well, fly ball, right field deep. Back for it goes Panella. He is there and he's got it at the railing. Lou Pinella with a saving catch on the warning path in right. And the Red Sox pick up a run. We go to the seventh. Do nothing, Boston. The attendance today, and they did not sell standing room for this game, 32,925, all the seats that you can have. Standing room was not sold. The record attendance for the year for the Red Sox, the new season record, 2,320,643 in this tiny ballpark that seats uh, a capacity of around 32, 33, 34, depending on standing room. Over 2,300,000 have crammed their way into the corners here this year. All right, here we go, seventh inning in some wood. Greg Nettles to lead it off against Mike Torres, twice. Burleson has taken care of him on a little pop-up down in shallow left field. 
2-0 Red Sox leading as we pound down now into the final innings climax of this one. And it has been magnificent. Breaking ball is into the knees for a call strike. And Nettles wheels around in amazement as he looks at Denkinger. Nothing and one to count. Dollar made a good play on that ball of Lins with a tough run in right field. He's staggering all the way, but he held on to it. Oh, how big that could have been. Mike's next delivery. A high fly ball out toward right. And now it's Jimmy Wright battling the sun out there. And he's got it. One gone in the seventh for the New Yorkers. And Chris Shambliss will bat. Has lined down and hit into a force play. Corral's away to the shaky start when he walked Rivers. And then allowed him to steal second. But he has just been magnificent from the second inning on. toward right center, not much. Yeah, it's way over in left center. Hard swing and a miss by Shamblett for a strike. Nothing and one. Wait on deck. Silence steals over the crowd as Torres goes to work on Chris and he lands a base hit to left. The third hit off Torres as Shamblett took him to the opposite field just going out and meeting the pitch. So the tying run comes up for the Yankees. And Roy White, who was struck out, and he's walked. First base runner the Yankees have had since White did walk, leading off the fifth inning. Ball hammer about six feet off the line at third. Against the switcher, White, batting left, of course. Scott not holding to Shamblin. Pitch, line drive, face hit, center field. Down to second goes Shamblin. White is on it first from the Yankees as the tying runs on with only one away. This brings a whole flock of people up in the Red Sox bullpen right now. They're calling Doyle back. And a hunch he'd never get up to the plate, and Lemon is going to go to the bench now with the tying runs on and only one away. Stanley is up. Hassler is up. And we're awaiting a pinch hitter out of the Yankee dugout. Could be Spencer, could be Thomas in here. It is Spencer. Jim Spencer coming up to bat for Doyle. Spencer against Red Sox pitching this year is 2 for 12. 167 average, and he's had an RBI. And Fisk is out to the mound, chatting with Mike Torres. First time the Yankees have had uh, two on here. <laughs> and it happened with great suddenness. Ripping single by Shambliss. And a harder hit one by White. <laughs> and Zimmer is on his way to the mound now. He has gotten six tremendous innings out of Mike Torres. The bullpen has not been active very long, so I would not think this is going to be any move out there. Each manager now has made one trip to the mound this afternoon. They have not had to make very many the way these two guys have hung it out, Torres and Gidry. Bohammer comes in. Fisk is there with Zimmer and Torres. Scott and Remy conferring on the right side of the infield. And three outfielders just biding their time. And now Dinkinger goes out to break it up. Zimmer walks away and Torres will stay. Yes, yeah, about in the middle of the scoreboard. Out and left for Jim Spencer. Overall, he's hitting 228, but he's had seven home runs, and he's driven in 24. Burleson overshaded towards second. Pretty good sized hole out at shortstop. Rohammer doesn't want to get too far off the line at third. And Remy right in the middle between first and second. Here is Torres' pitch. A rip and a foul back out of play for a strike. Nothing and one. Bucky Dent's on deck, and Fisk again 
right out to the mound to stay right on top of Torres. How many times? How many times a year do you think that conversation has been held? Oh goodness, Fisk and Torres. He is staying right on top of him though. Hasler and Stanley throwing hard in the Red Sox bullpen. Chambliss, the runner at second. Roy White, a pestiferous hitter always against Boston, is at first. Torres is ready. And the pitch. The drive out toward left center field, but Yaz is right there to put it away. Two out. Yaz had him played perfectly. in the Yankee seventh and up comes Bucky Dent who is flied to right and popped to Burleson. Perez walking around in a circle completely circling the entire pitcher's mound. Two warming pitchers for the Red Sox looking out on the field of play right now. Stanley and Hafler. Rivers is on deck Perez will just as soon get his decision in this inning with Dent. So it's 0 for 2 today, but it's hit well against Boston throughout the year. 3-14. Mike brings it to him, and he started to go after it. Checked off at the ball. One ball, no strikes. Torres at the rosin bag. Rohammer's almost sitting on the line at third now. Don't want anything going by him along that line and into a death well down in the corner. Yaz is well over toward left or toward the line. Torres to Dent. Bouncing foul out of play over in the on deck circle and Bucky is limping. Flexed it right off his left foot. Now he's looking at it. All the Yankee brass sitting in tense fashion alongside of their dugout. The Yankee trainer coming out, George Steinbrenner, Al Rosen. And now the trainer will examine the foot of Mr. Dent, and we have a lull in the day's occupation here. Mike looking into the Red Sox dugout, and the crowd ever so quiet. And they haven't been... Uh, this way too much today. Still a ways to go in this one. And this is Fenway, and this is for the whole big boodle, baby. All of it. To see who goes on to Kansas City tonight. To face the Royals. Tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern Time, and at 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, a day off here. And then a Friday afternoon game, and Saturday and Sunday night game. If it goes five. All right, Dent finally gets back up and ready to go. One ball, one strike on Bucky. Shambles, the runner at second, White on at first. And the crowd starts to build it up again. Torres in trouble. Got a big out on the pinch hitter, Spencer. Mike is set. Here's the pitch. There's a drive toward left. And Yastrzemski will watch it go into the screen. And the Yankees lead 3-2. to two. He did that before here, too. The Yankee dugout is all out to get Bucky Dent. He pulled the ball toward the foul pole. He has went back to play it off the wall. But it just did get up into the screen. And suddenly this whole thing has turned around. It is 3-2 to two, New York on a three-run homer by Dent. And Torres was beside himself. Now here's Rivers. He swings at the first pitch and lifts the foul back and out of play for a strike. Nothing in one. I, I don't know about the inches that that made it by, but it just did. Just, I can add little feet and crawl right up and just did get over the wall. Pitch to Rivers, down and into a left-hand batter, one ball, one strike. Torres has been breathing to this inning. 
and out in two singles. Then getting the danger, Spencer, and having Dent, who has done it so many times, do it again. Strike two called on Rivers. One and two. Yankee dugout exploded. As you can imagine the feelings in the Red Sox dugout. It is very, very quiet over there. The one-two pitch. Ball two a little bit inside. Two balls, two strikes. Mike tearing in towards fifth. Works to Rivers. Little ground ball up the first base side. It goes foul. Almost twisted back in again. Fifth was chasing all the way up the line. Rivers up, two balls and two strikes. Long look in by Torres once more as he works to Mickey. And throws it outside and low, ball three. Three and two the count. And that's the score. The Yankees three and the Red Sox two here in the top of the seventh. Give him a telephone back row. 32,000 sitting stunned except for the Yankee fans that are scattered throughout the audience. There's ball four and Rivers one. And Zimmer's coming out to get the rest. This will be it. The call goes out to the bullpen. And we remind you that you're listening to the championship playoff game at Fenway Park in Boston. Kyanize for people who do their own painting and the choice of experts, too. Ma'am, are you one of the expert painters? I sure am, young man. And experts know the right paint is important. Kyanize colors-free latex flat. On this expert, does... Ready Mix colors cover any color with only one coat. It what dries a... in minutes, and the finish is so durable you won't have to repaint until you want a color change. But experts... Even if you're not an expert, you'll like the easy soap and water cleanup. Kyanize colors-free latex flat. For all your painting needs, visit Allied Paint and Building Supply, Reading, or Everett Supply, Everett. Miguel and Mike Torres carried it six and two-thirds this afternoon, giving up three runs, five hits, walked two, struck out four, and again, Zimmer has gone to Bob Stanley. Yes, sir, and if the Red Sox pull this out, that uh, negates Stanley as a starter tomorrow night in Kansas City. Stanley has done everything asked of him this year. This is his 52nd appearance, his 49th in relief. He's won 15, lost two, saved 10 and has an earned run average, the best on the staff, of 2.55. Big sinker baller from Jersey, facing Thurman Munson. And Drago immediately gets up to work with Hassler in the bullpen as Munson stands in. Munson struck out three times facing Torres. But the danger here is Rivers. He was on in the first inning and went on the first pitch and stole second. He's got a pretty good lead again. Move over and Mickey got back just ahead of the tag of George Scott. Shadows now almost out to the pitcher's mound. Another throw to first. Rivers back. Scott got the tag right on his back. Yankees are leading three to two. The hits are even at five apiece. The home run ball has been big today. One for the Red Sox with nobody on. One for the Yankees with two men on. Rivers goes. And the pitch swung on and missed. Here's a weak throw by Fifth. Sailing into the dirt. And Rivers steals again. Fifth ball died in the grass. In behind Stanley. But took a pretty good hop into Remy to make it fairly close. Munson ripped at the pitch, so it's no balls and a strike, and Fisk is on his way out to the mound to have a chat with Stanley now. Imparting some words of advice to the big sinker baller. All right, one strike on Thurman Munson, the captain of the Yankees. And a big, big run in scoring position for New York. Rivers has been aboard three times today. The look back by Stanley. And Munson drives one out in the left center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Here is Rivers in to score. Ball gets away from Lynn. Munson's into the second. 
And the Yankees now lead four to two. And run charge to Therese. And yet another runner in scoring position for New York. They have come up with a big four-run seventh inning. You worry about Munson when he's struck out three times and he's in a big inning. You worry about him. <laughs> tough, tough man. Situation like this. And you worry about this guy here, too. Lou Pinella. He's one for three on the day. Family works. Fly ball. Deep right field. Back goes Rice, and he's got it to retire the side. But the Yankees have taken the lead as they go to the bottom of the seventh, four to two. Red Sox now in desperate straits. Two runs down the Ron Guidry. Butch Hobson to lead it off. He's one for two in the game. Bet that Gossage will be alerted out there. Did Gidry stumble at all? Straight away in the outfield for Butch. Gidry swings to his motion, delivers, and hops and swings, and he misses for a strike. Nothing and one. the slim little left-hander. Foul back into the screen, strike two. And he's quickly out ahead of Butch. No balls, two strikes. Gidry not overpowering with his strikeout ball today. He's worth four. Doing a little manicuring right now out on the pitching mound. Red Sox down to their last nine out. Hobson takes the ball just off the corner of the plate. One and two the count. Gidry works pretty much in a hurry. Fires and strikes Hobson out. Five strikeouts now. One man out to Hobson and Bob Bailey is coming out on deck to hit for Brohammer. a long double off the center field wall in the third inning and then was a strikeout victim in the fifth. 4-2 Yankees, seventh inning. Long study by Gidry this time and he wheels it into the boomer. And a wrap that is through in the right field, the base hit. Scott gets his second hit of the game. Just nudged it through out of the reach of Fred Stanley who just went in at second base. And Bob Lemon is on the move. As Zimmer has made his move and brought Bailey out, but Bailey's never been announced. They're going to make Lemon commit himself right here. Brohammer's not out there either. No, the call has gone to the bullpen right now. And Gossage will be coming on. And again, we remind you, you're listening to Red Sox baseball from Fenway Park in Boston. Gossage has been the big... King man in the bullpen this year. A 1.91 earned run average. This is his 63rd appearance. He's won 10, lost 11, saved 26, and struck out 120 in 132 innings. Walked just 58. Given up nine home runs, if you're thinking about that. Bob Bailey bats for Brohammer. He's had one hit. That was a home run off Lindblad. A tremendous blast at Yankee Stadium. Bailey overall, 194, four home runs, nine batted in. He represents the tying run with Scott at first, Shamless not holding. Goffey fires his fastball outside. One ball and no strikes. Rivers just leaning toward left center. White is back almost on the warning track and left. And Pinella, deep right field. The pitch fouled out of play, first base side. One ball, one strike. Hits are even at six apiece, but the Yankees have the two-run bulge in the only column that counts today. 4-2 New York, seventh inning. Pitch to Bailey, floundered right through there, strike two. One and two the count. Burleson on deck. Zimmer hoping to get a long ball blast from Bailey. But he's down, one ball, two strikes, here's the pitch. Strike three, called. Bailey is called out on strike, that's two away. 
And up comes Burleson. Burleson's had one hit, a double, down into the left field corner in the sixth inning off Gidry. So the Goose has come on to do his thing. Caught Bailey looking. Scott still at first, but there's two men out. Burleson takes the strike, and Gossage is bringing it. Heat and more heat. Burleson out of the batter's box right now. Bill Lee is up and throwing in the Red Sox bullpen. Strike two calls. Gossage is just rearing back and firing it through there and in the strike zone. Two quick strikes on Burleson. Scott, a wandering lead off first. Chambliss, two steps in behind him. Here's the pitch by Gossage. Way inside, and Scott will go on down in second as the ball got away from Munson. Pass ball, charged to the Yankee catcher. So now a big run moves into scoring position. But Burleson's chances are reduced to one swing. New York four, Boston two, bottom of the seventh. Burleson dug in. Here's the pitch. A ground ball towards short. Picked up by Dent. Fired low, but Chamber stays with it. And we will go to the eighth inning, 4-2 Yankees. Axtell Ford Lincoln Mercury. It's simple. Axtell wants to sell you your next car. Hy-Vee East and Hy-Vee West, two stores for your convenience where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Morgan Jewelers in the Newton Shopping Center, the home of the ABC of Fine Watches, Accutron, Bulova, and Caravelle. And the Terrace N, I-80 and Highway 14, it's Newton's most complete entertainment center and experience to repeat. Frank Duffy replaces Prohammer at third. Reggie Jackson will be the hitter, and I pass this baton on to you, Mr. Martin. All right, Mr. Woods, I don't know what you did with it, but uh, it's still a good ball game. There's two innings to go and a two-run affair between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yankees leading 4-2. to two. Three-run homer by Bucky Dent and a run-producing hit by Thurman Munson. Reggie Jackson is up against Bob Stanley. Gave up the double to Munson for the insurance runs, but all four runs charged to Therese. The pitch is outside, ball one. Jackson has fly to left, line to right, and grounded to second. Shadows lengthening over the field now. Pitch by Stanley. Outside, ball two. Stanley, the batter and catcher, and third baseman Frank Duffy all in shadow now. Everybody else still in the sunlight. And it's a tough October sun, sun now in the player's eyes on the right side in right field and at first and second. Jackson spills a foul over the sky views on the third base side. Two balls, one strike. The dent home run quieted this house, reminding me of Kansas City in the fifth game of the playoffs last year when the Yankees won it. Fly ball, deep center field, pretty high. It is up. It is away. It is gone. Home run, Reggie Jackson, 5-2, to two, New York. Reggie Jackson pumped one into the triangle in center field for his 27th home run of the year, his 97th RBI, and an insurance run for the Yankees. He belted it, and Lynn just knew that it was gone. He turned around. He didn't go to the wall. Don Zimmer coming to the mound. Nettles will be the hitter, and I guess he'll want Andy Hassler. He does. Andy Hassler coming from the bullpen after the home run by Jackson off the big right-hander, Bob Stanley. So we'll remind you again, you're listening to Red Sox baseball from Fenway Park in Boston. Hassler overall 3-5 and five in 23 ball games with an earned run average of 3.95. Against uh, the Yankees this year, he has no record, made four appearances, working ten and two-thirds innings, giving up nine runs, seven of them earned, walked six, struck out ten. Hasler has been a good pitcher in this uh, surge of the Red Sox to get back in it. He pitched very good ball in Detroit and Toronto, and the big uh, left-hander is very much in the Red Sox plans for last for next year as 
probably a starter, but he could be a reliever. He is three and five on the year. For the Red Sox, uh, two and one. Base is clear now, and the hitter is Greg Nettles. Nettles has popped up twice to short and fly to right. It's the Yankees five, the Red Sox two in the top of the eighth. Here's the pitch by Hassler. Check swing foul back, strike one. Hassler has had trouble with his pitching hand. He cut it earlier in the summer. And it has some uh, bones floating around there, too, in his hand. So he's going to have surgery this, this winter also. He's had to take cortisone shots in the hand when he, a couple of times when he's pitched. He burns one inside on Nettles. A check swing, ball one. One ball, one strike. Now they check off with third base umpire Palermo, and he calls a strike. Twice in that game, this game now, a strike has been called on a hitter. A Yankee hitter by either the first or third base umpire, both of them. Hassler hunkers over and goes to work on Nettles. Knocks him down. The pitch with a curveball actually wasn't that close to him. It started out that close, but it broke toward the plate not quite getting the corner. One ball, two strikes. Drago and LaRoe is warming in the bullpen for Boston. The fastball is low outside, ball two, two and two. Down in the Red Sox dugout. Rather forlorn figure of Dennis Eckersley sitting at the far end. Five to New York. Eighth inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss and Nettles is out. Hassler fans the first man he faces. Chris Shambliss up. Shambliss is lined to first. Had a fielder's choice and single to left. And it was his single to left field with one out that started the uprising in the seventh when the Yankees got their four runs. They say that his bat's been rather slow lately, but maybe that was why he got the single to left field in the seventh. He went with the pitch. Ground ball right side and stabbed by Remy beautifully. Falls down, throws. He's got him. Good play by, and a big argument by Shambliss and Gene Michael, the first base coach. Close play at first on a great play and effort by Jerry Remy, who went far to his left, went to his diving for the ball on the grass, got up and threw him out. Taking a look at it on the replay, we have a monitor in our booth. Very close play, but he was called out. And Shambliss, who very seldom says anything, was fiery. He got him. Good call by the first base umpire, Evans. Now it's two outs to Roy White, turning around to bat right-handed against Hassler. The pitch is hit on the ground to Remy out near second base. Stays, throws, he's got him. Good stab by Scott. And that's the end of the inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Five to two, New York. Glenn Wehrman Shell at 302 First Avenue East, your full-service Shell station with a full line of quality car care supplies. Super Sports, serving all sports in all seasons. Super Sports at 213 West 2nd Street North in Newton. Jerry Remy up. Gossie throws a strike on the outside corner. The big freewheeling right-hander came on, struck out. One batter got another one on a ground ball to end things in the seventh. Ground ball, fair ball, past first base, down into right field. Ball being fielded by Panella. Remy has a leadoff double. Let's pause here for a station identification on the Red Sox radio network. KLVN 95.9 FM in Newton, Iowa. The time is 4 o'clock. has them up and cheering as he leads off the eighth inning with a double double right down the right field line, bouncing against the railing, and nobody touched it. They kept away from it. Here's Jim Wright. Pitch to him is low, ball one. Gossage, working to Wright, who has had one hit in three times up, a single to center field, 
in the sixth inning. The pitch, strike swinging, he jammed him up and in. One ball, one strike. Still quite a ball game here. Two magnificently prepared and executed ball clubs trying for the 100th win, which will win the pennant. Rice hits a high fly ball to right field. Padella coming toward the line. Long run. He's there. He's got it. Remy bluffs toward third and holds as the throw comes in. So now there's one out. And Yastrzemski comes up. Carl Yastrzemski has hit a home run. Struck out and grounded out. moves some dirt around the shortstop position, holds his one finger up to the outfield, one out. Remy at second. Yastrzemski, a fastball hitter, will look from the fastball from Gossage. Inside, ball one. Vanilla shielding his eyes against the sun with his glove out in deep right field. Rivers well over toward right center. Line drive, base hit, center field. Remy being waved around. It's now five to three. Yastrzemski with another RBI. Carl Yastrzemski rising again to the occasion, singling sharply up the middle. Remy scoring easily. It's now Yankees five, Red Sox three, and the tying run at the plate. this inning off Gossage. Smith has slid to left, slid deep to center, and was intentionally passed. The faithful are up at Fenway again. Smith steps out, takes his usual practice swing. And the fans are jiving out here right now. Field double play depth. Pitch to fifth. Low, ball one. A roar in every pitch that's a ball. Or that resembles a base hit. Dick Drago is warming in the bullpen for Boston. Nobody warming for New York. Gossage looks in. Defensive crouched off the bag at first. Pitch is hit high and foul down into left field. And everybody standing on the roof there chases it. One ball, one strike. Gossage has walked 58 and struck out 120 before coming into this game. It's a little better than a two-to-one strikeout-to-walk ratio, but some of his walks have really hurt him. Strike call, the fifth. Good pitch, waist high. And it's one ball, two strikes. One and two. Red Sox fighting, trying to fight back. They trail by two. Gossage set. Throws. Check swing, low, outside, ball two. Two balls, two strikes. One away. Stanley and Dent in a double play depth at second. Normal double play depth with Fisk at bat and Yastrzemski at first. Gossage delivers. High ball three. Full count, three and two. Big, big pitch coming up to Fisk. Lynn on deck. with the sign. Here it is. Ground ball foul just outside of third base. Wickedly hit, but just foul by about a yard. Three and two, the count hangs. Yastrzemski back to first. And the bullpen finally gets busy for New York. Ken Clay, right-hander, along with left-hander Sparky Lyle. Three and two to fifth.
Gossage set. Throws. There's a base hit to center field. Jastrzemski stays a second. Fisk is on with a handle hit to center. The tying run at first. They are wailing and cheering here at Fenway Park. As the Red Sox fight back in the eighth inning, they still trail by two. Nobody has gone to the mound. Fred Lynn is up. Lynn stands in there. Fisk off first. He fisted that, and he gave Bogosic all he could handle. Yastrzemski at second. Fisk at first. Lynn at the plate. He's 0 for 3. Here's a foul ripped back here on a good cut by Lynn. Nothing in one. The on-deck hitter, Butch Hobson. No, don't go away. It's noisy again at Fenway. Here it comes. Here's a drive into left field. Another base hit. Yastrzemski being waved on. He scores. It's now 5-4. Have the tying run at second, the lead run at first. Bob Lemon coming to the mound. Goose Gossage, the prime reliever, has been belted around here by Boston. A double, an out, a single, a single, and a single, and now finds himself ahead by only a run. Ten hits for the Red Sox to seven for New York. Lemon talking to Gossage and Munson. Incredibly, the Red Sox down by three and running out of time have come back for two here in the eighth. There's still just one out. Gossage stays in. And Hobson comes up. Fifth representing the tying run is at second base. And Lynn is at first. Down to a one-run ball game again. Everybody that has come today has gotten exactly what they planned and hoped for. A tight, tense, dramatic ball game. Gossage works and Hobson takes low, ball one. One ball, no strike. The next pitch, swung on, fly ball, right field. Late break by Pinella, but he comes in, he has got it. And throws in, and there are two outs now, with George Scott coming up. The boomer has grounded out. Or rather, he has doubled, he has struck out, and he has singled. And here's big time at bat for the guy that went into such an awful slump this year and came back out of it, has been benched and come back off the bench, benched again, and here he is with a chance to send the Red Sox either into a tie or a hit in the ninth inning, and that would put it down to sudden death for New York. Gossage working to Scott. Set, throws, outside, ball one. Frank Duffy is the on-deck hitter. Lynn off first and Fisk off second. Here it comes. Foul back. One ball, one strike to Scott. Boomer in this most important game. Two for three, a single and a double. One ball, one strike and two away. Gossage set, throws, strike two, swinging. And it's now one and two. Scott takes a deep breath. Eddie Yost calls down some words from third. Gossage bent into the side. Now he comes with a pitch, and it's one on and missed strike three. Got him with two on, 
And we go to the ninth inning. Yankees 5, Red Sox 4. The chair is in I-80 and 14. It's Newton's most complete entertainment center. An experience to repeat. Green Acres Farm Supply. Visit with Ed Dalton about how you can increase your farm profits. Resodding for complete lawn care and nursery-grown weed-free sod to dress up the appearance of your home. Call Jim Reese. Merchant storage and transfer. When you make your next move, call the gentleman of the moving business, the North American Van Lines agent. Garrett Drew Value Hardware Store. When you need a widget or a whatchamacallit, chances are you'll find at Garrett's, serving the Newton area for 37 years. Country Press, specializing in commercial printing. Bob Vanderskill brings over 20 years' experience to your printing work. Call 792-1855. McDonald's in Newton open every day at 6 a.m. for breakfast. We do it all for you at McDonald's. A one-run game between the Yankees and Boston. The Yankees have five runs and seven hits. The Red Sox, four runs and ten hits. 32,925 glazed eyes, sets of eyes, observing what's happening on the field. Mick Fred Stanley is going to be first up. Came on to play second base in the seventh inning when they pinch it for Brian Doyle. Stanley, Dent, and Rivers up this inning. Stanley has hurt the Red Sox not only this year, but other years, both at the stadium and here. Right-handed batter, batting 220. One home run and nine RBI. He had the home run against the Red Sox. Ground ball to second. Gobbled up by Doyle. Going there by... <laughs> Remy going to his right, and he's got it over there to first base for the out. The resurgence of Denny Doyle at second base for the Red Sox. Bucky Dent is up, and he is the villain of the piece as far as Red Sox fans are concerned. Paul Blair is on deck. Mickey Rivers due up next. Paul Blair is in there on the on-deck circle. Dent has hit the three-run homer that brought the silence to Boston. Pitch is low for a ball. Dent has popped up, slide out his other two times. But with two on in the seventh inning, he parked one just into the screen to put the Yankees ahead. Hassler's pitch. Sinker called strike. One ball, one strike. One out in the Yankee night. Now the windup. Now the pitch. Another shot toward left field, the curving foul, and that's on the roof. Another long shot by Bucky Dent. One ball, two strikes. In the ninth inning, the Red Sox will have scheduled up Duffy, Burleson, and Remy. Shadow is all over the infield and encompassing Yastrzemski and left. Only Rice and Lynn are in sunshine now. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes to Dent. Strike three call. Good breaking ball by Hassler. Dent is out. Two away. Second strikeout by Andy Hassler. And here is Paul Blair to bat for Mickey Rivers. And of course, we'll play center field in the bottom of the ninth. Paul Blair is hitting 169 with two home runs and 13 RBIs. He's been the late inning defensive replacement in center throughout the season. Now the wind up and pitch. Ground ball, base hit, pass third into left field. The dive by Duffy. And Paul Blair is on and makes room for Munson. Blair gets a pinch single past the dive of Frank Duffy. And Zimmer is coming to the mound. He wants help from the bullpen right now. Dick Drago is up. He wants Drago, the right-hander, to pitch to Munson. So we're having a pitching change again. And the hand for Hassler as he leaves. You're listening to Red Sox Baseball. They go 4-4. Four four. 37 appearances now. He had one start, earned run average 3.04, seven saves, 77 innings of pitching, 26 earned runs, five home runs. He walked 32, struck out 42. Against the Yankees, he's 0-1 in five appearances with an ERA of 5.4.30. Worked 14 and two-thirds innings against the pinstripe this year, giving up nine runs. Seven earned, two home runs. He walked 10 and struck out 11 against New York. And I guess about his most sensational moment of the year, 
Jim, was against these Yankees down in the stadium in midseason in the uh, suspended game. When curfew had sounded, the Red Sox could not bat again. The Yankees were batting at past 1 o'clock. Reggie Jackson was up, had a chance to win it right there with runners on, and Drago struck him out and uh, sent it into the next day when the Red Sox eventually won. You know, that sounds like it happened 10 years ago to me about <laughs> this stage of this race. It was 10 years ago. <laughs> Thurman Munson will be the man that Drago faces here. Munson has struck out three times and doubled. He struck out the three times against the starter, Mike Therese. And then Stanley came in, and Munson was the first man to face him. He lofted a double to left center and drove in a run with it. Paul Blair at first base, two outs in the Yankee night. The Yankees leading the Red Sox 5-4. And one of Drago's closest friends in baseball, Lou Pinella, is kneeling on deck. They played together in the Kansas City years. Wind has turned around and is blowing in now. Drago drops down, comes in. Munson hits the ground ball left side to Burleson. Throws to second. They've got him. Blair is out at second. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. New York 5, Boston 4. Defensive changes for the Yankees in the ninth. Gary Thomason is playing left field, and Paul Blair is in center. Thomason in left, and Blair in center. And we're going to have Dwight Evans pinch hit for Frank Duffy. Dwight Evans, who was benched in Toronto over a week ago. He wasn't hitting. He's going to pinch hit. He's one guy who, if he gets the right pitch and slams it, has the power to knock it out of here, and that's what Don Zimmer wants now. He wants the tie, and he'll worry about the win later. It has come down to the bottom of the ninth in the last game of the season between two of the best teams in baseball. Yankees leading 5-4. to four. Gossage, who gave, got in all kinds of trouble in the eighth, delivers, and Evans takes low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Burleson on deck with Remy to follow. Time called by Evans. He backs out. Not a soul has left. Gossage, wide, throws. High fly ball, left field. Thomason coming in toward the line. Under it, waiting. He's got it. One out. Evans is down. The batter is Rick Burleson. One for four, a double to left field in the sixth inning, and he scored a run. Burleson had a home run in yesterday's game. Blair in center, Thomason in left. Here's the pitch to Burley, and he takes low, ball one. Wind up and pitch. Ball two. Two and nothing. Gossage working very quickly. Winds and throws a 2-0 delivery. Way outside, ball three. Three and nothing to Burleson. Burley crouched at home plate. Here it comes. Strike call right on the inside corner. Three and one. Anything to do to get on base. Anything. Three balls, one strike to Burleson. Gossage, kicks, throws, walks him. Tying run on. One out. The first walk given up by Gossage, and now he faces Jerry Remy. The on-deck hitter is Jim Rice. Remy is up. He is one for three, a double to right field in the eighth inning. Finale in right field in a semicircle of sun facing a very tough lowering sun. Here's the pitch to Remy. Fly ball going foul down the left field side into the crowd. One table setter is on. Burleson with one out. Yankees five. Red Sox four. Bottom of the ninth. Here's the set. Pitch to Jerry. Swinging, strike two. And now it is nothing and two. Now the 
set. Now the pitch. Fly ball lined into right field, and Pinella can't find it. It hits in front of him. It's a base hit. The throw comes to third base. Runners at first and second. One out. Pinella lost the ball in the sun. And the thunder of Fenway Park descends. The tying run is at second base. The potential winning run at first. And Jim Rice at the plate with Yastrzemski on deck. A fighting Red Sox ball club trying to do it right here. The pennant riding on every pitch. Rice stepped in. He has struck out. Grounded to short. Singled home a run. And slides to right. Gossage works. Rice fouls it back. Strike one. All the drama that you can possibly want is right here. The microcosm down to 60 feet, 6 inches. Gossage to right. One out, and the tough man, Carl Yastrzemski, on deck. Carlson off second, Remy off first. The pitch to right. Fly ball, right field deep. Well back towards the bullpen, but under it is Pinella. He's got it. Carlson heads for third, and the tying runs at third base. Rice with a long fly ball to right. And now there are two outs and Yastrzemski coming up. And what poetic justice this is. Bob Lemon coming to the mound. Sparky Lyle is ready in the bullpen if Lemon wants him. Yastrzemski in this ballgame has homered and singled, knocked in two of the Red Sox four runs. The tying run at third. Very important run is Rick Burles. Of course, the winner is at first base in Remy. Ball was hit well by Rice to the opposite field, but this time Pinella had it all in his glance. He was high enough so that he did not lose the ball in the sun. That ran Burleson tagged and went the third after the catch. Well, Johnny Pesky had gone in to get some instruction from Don Zimmer, and he's out talking to Remy at first base, saying, hey, what do you think about a head down to second base and try some possibility of a delayed steal? depending on the count to Yastrzemski. Gossage is staying in. It was against Gossage that Yaz singled the center field in the eighth inning. And the whole ballpark is up as the captain walks to the plate. He wants plate umpire Denkinger to look at the baseball. It seems to be okay, and Gossage gets the ball back. So here it is. We're at it right now. Red Sox battling in the ninth inning to try to tie it up now and to try to win it now. Jerry Remy at first base. Rick Burleson at third. Two out. Gossage ready to challenge Yastrzemski. Here it is. Low ball one. One ball, no strikes to Yaz. Fisk on deck. A frenzied Fenway Park. Gossage ready. Yastrzemski tugs at the belt. Steps in. Here's the pitch. A high pop-up to the left side. In fair ground is Greg Nettles. In foul ground is Nettles. He's got, and the Yankees win the pennant. Yastrzemski fouls out to end it all at Fenway Park with two outs in the ninth and the tying run at third, the winning run at first. Nettles taking the foul ball, just as Brohammer did yesterday, to force this into the extra, extra day. But the Yankees have won it, and Reggie Jackson's home run was the winning hit, as it turned out. In the ninth inning, the Red Sox, no runs. They had a hit, and they left two big ones on base. The final score, the Yankees five, the Red Sox four. We'll wrap it up in a moment. Jasper County Tire Company, 220 First Avenue East with Michelin and Goodyear Tires, plus wheel alignment and exhaust system service. Snook Brothers, when it comes to fertilizer and ag chemicals, deal with the people you know and trust. Oscom Sign and Display, design, fabrication, and installation of custom electric signs, building facades, and storefronts. The Wallace Funeral Home, a member of the Order of the Golden Rule, serving families of all faiths. winning game for the New York Yankees. Five runs for New York. They had eight hits. No errors. They left four. They left uh, five men on base, as a matter of fact. The Red Sox had four runs. Eleven hits. No errors. And nine men left. 
two very big ones in the ninth. They gave it all they could, but it was just not enough. The winning pitcher, Ron Guidry, 25 and 3. And uh, the losing pitcher, Mike Perez, 16 and 13. Two Yankee home runs. One by Bucky Dent with two on in the seventh. At the time, the Yankees were trailing 2 0. One by Reggie Jackson, leading off the eighth inning, his 27th of the year. That proved to be the winning run. The home run by the Red Sox by Carl Yastrzemski. He hit it in the second inning, his 17th. More in a moment. with Don Drysdale interviewing Bob Lemon. I'm always skeptical. Bob, I said up in the program, I thought the key play of the whole afternoon was the ball that Lou Pinella caught off of the bat of Freddie Lynn. He fought the ball, he fought the sun, and he made the catch in the inning when they scored the second run. That's right. He's been playing this outfield pretty good. He didn't see the ball uh, in the last inning that Remy hit, but, uh, you know, in the World Series in the playoff, Lou's quite a battler, and he, he uh, really competes. Your plan's right now to start it tomorrow. Uh, Jim Beatty. Jim Beatty, and then you'll go from there. Well, yeah, we'll take one day at a time and see who's able. Bob, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. I want to say hello to my mom. Okay, good luck in Kansas City. Okay, let's see if we can move right around over here. Where's he at? George Steinbrenner. George, congratulations. Well, Don, thanks. Uh, they did a super job, and the Red Sox are a fabulous team. They never gave up all year. We caught them and passed them. They kept battling. Fans here were great. It was, it, it was 
the Surreys will have trouble matching that excitement out there today. We were commenting watching you and Al Rosen in the booth, and I want to check your nails. I was wondering if you have any left. <laughs> no knuckles, Don. No knuckles. Okay. George, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck in Kansas well, City. Well, thanks very much. Okay, George Stein Brennan. Right now, let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson, and we'll try and come back down here in just a moment. Keith? All right, Don, it is a quiet crowd now that begins to file out of Fenway Park. And I make the note again that for a second successive year, they've drawn over two million people to watch baseball at this old cornerstone of the American League. And uh, they're going to leave a bit somber. If the Red Sox had won, this joint would be jumping. They might even knock a few bricks out of the wall. But it was not to be in 1978 for Boston. They gave it a run, but it ultimately it came down to this one ball game, and you just saw it. New York winning it 5-4. Here's Don again. Okay, right. Here we have Thurman Munson. And Thurman, uh, the big key double, you strike out three times, you get a key double to drive in the third run in that inning. And I think, uh, well, that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back, but then you got to go to the home run that Reggie hit, too. You know, it was real hard to see and when the game started. There were a lot of shadows and people out in center field, and we were just jumping all over the place. We only had, what, two hits through seven innings, and then... Uh, all of a sudden, you know, everything started going out, and of course, Bucky hit the home run, and that was just uh, tremendous. But you got to, I'll tell you what, you got to give the team a lot of credit for coming up here and beating these guys in the playoff. Is this one of your biggest thrills? I think it is. You know, we came from 14 games down. You know, they kept saying, well, uh, you know, they had a bad streak. Uh, if they could get another crack at us, you know, that they'd beat us. They've got a better front nine than we have, and we came up and beat them all over again. And I'll tell you, it really feels good. Now, what about the feeling now going to Kansas City? First of all, you're in the playoffs, but can you get your, is there going to be a letdown, or do you think you'll carry it right on through? Well, I think what we're going to <laughs> have to do is just party and get to bed early tonight and come out tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> okay, Thurman Munson, and right now let's go again back up to Keith Jackson, and we'll see if we can find Bucky Dent down here for you. All right, Don, the New York Yankees in winning the Eastern Division of the American League will go in on artificial surface tomorrow against the ball club in Kansas City. I think that plays as well as any ball club in baseball on the artificial surface. It is a very quick baseball team, one that had its struggles this year, too. The Royals didn't exactly waltz home in the Western Division of the American League. They had to struggle to get it. They have had the extra couple of days of rest now, but uh, we'll see what we shall see. Right now, let's check in the clubhouse one more time. All right, well, the gentleman right here is certainly no stranger to ABC Sports and to the Yankee fans all over the country. Reggie Jackson, a big home run for you, and that was proved to be the decisive run. Well, thanks a lot, Don. Uh, it, it did work out that way, but really, it wasn't planned at all. Uh, I was just hoping to get a base hit and to do something to help the ball club because... Uh, you know, I, I hadn't gotten any hits or anything, and uh, it just seemed like we were pretty much in control. You know, you never know in this ballpark, but, you know, in pressure games, they don't seem to score a lot of lot of runs, and uh, I didn't think it would help out that much, but uh, it worked out well. You've been on championship clubs, world championship clubs. Have you ever had a bigger thrill than this one day for one game? Well, yeah, I, I can say that I have. Uh, uh, last year was a great thrill for me in the World Series, and uh, it was a great thrill the fifth game in, in, in 77 uh, against Kansas City, the fifth game in 72, and the seventh game of the World Series in 72 and in 73, Don. It's, it's been a long career for me, and uh, Keith Jackson said before the game, don't you ever do anything easy in your life, and uh, life just isn't an easy road, and I'm just happy it worked out the way it has. What uh, right now we've got, uh, we've got just a little bit longer, uh, Reg, and I just wondered uh, what the, the feeling was throughout the course of the ball game. You got down two, two to nothing. Did you feel as though all the time that you could could come back, was, or were you just looking for a little break here or there? Well, Don, you know, as you say, you know, and you've played baseball so many, you know, so many years, and you get to the point sometimes, like today, we felt good, we came in the game ready, and Torres had things going his way. It just didn't seem like we could catch a break. We we hit some balls hard, and then one time, I, I felt like I was really set up at the plate. I had a ball hitting and I lined the ball right at Jim Rice and then after that we, we still caught a couple of Brad breaks and just didn't seem like our day and Paul Blair was saying gee it just doesn't seem like it's going to be ours and then Blair in the seventh inning said gee let's get a four spot and all of a sudden things turned around for us and here we are. Well Reggie congratulations good luck in Kansas City we're going to talk to the man over here that had himself quite a year Ron Gidley. Ronnie come on in here. <laughs> you can. And Bucky Dent right behind we'll get you both in right here because first of all, Ron, congratulations, a winning pitcher this afternoon, and I guess that kind of caps off a great year, but you still got work to do. Yeah, that's right, right. right. and uh, it's it. been a great year for me, and, uh, you know, to come back and win on the last day of the season, uh, that made my year complete. If I would have lost it, I don't think that would have meant anything, but uh, when you got guys like Bucky here that come through, you know, everything's worth rewarding. <laughs> How did you feel today, the second time out with three days rest? 
Well, I felt good for about the first three or four innings, and then I could tell that uh, that extra day, uh, you know, missing the extra day was taking its toll. But uh, I tried to keep the ball down, keep us close, and uh, let the other guys do the work. Well, close. You kept them. And listen, congratulations. Good luck in Kansas City. We'll let you go. I know you got some work to do. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Ron Gidry and Bucky Dan, I'll tell you one thing. I, I know you've never hit a bigger home run in your life. I'm not even going to ask you that. Never. <laughs> never is the biggest hit of my career I think right now well the one thing too you were you were almost down and out and I know that people around the country that are Red Sox fans saying why in the world didn't he stay out and then all of a sudden uh, you get it off of your leg and you come up and hit the very next pitch fastball up over the plate yeah it was in he got the ball in on me a little bit uh, actually I, was, I hadn't been seeing the ball real well it, it's it's kind of tough to see the ball in this park and uh, I was looking just just to make good contact you know and drive the ball somewhere so we can maybe score a run because I know Mickey was coming up behind us and he, he's a threat anytime and I was just trying to make contact when you what, then you hit it did you know it was out no I didn't even see the ball I was running down the first baseline I thought I was going to hit off the wall for a double right now now you got uh, you go to Kansas City and of course you've got uh, you've got the Royals what are your thoughts there well we're just going to go out and have to play good baseball against them they're a good team uh, they've given us a lot of trouble in Kansas City and uh, we're just going to have to go play good baseball like we've been Bucky congratulations on a big day and good luck in Kansas City thank you very much right now let's go back upstairs and Keith Jackson thank you Don once again the Yankees win the Eastern Division of the American League beating the Boston Red Sox in Fenway this afternoon five to four and finally we have highlights of this game for you from Armed Forces Radio Ernie Harwell does the play-by-play and we enter with Wynn Elliott at the mic in the bottom of the second inning Carl Yastrzemski is at the plate. Now Ron Gidry, on the other hand, who is noted for his speed, also has that lighter and the change of pace. And Ron, seemingly nervous, this young man of steel had a perfect first inning, two strikeouts and a pop fly. Here's the captain of the Boston Red Sox. He'd eventually be a great hitter. Guess who's here today? Ted Wiggins. Right. Had to come back. He's looking great, too. I bet the fish are happy. <laughs> yeah. Leave him alone for a couple of days. Yeah. Here's Jazz at the plate now. A great ovation for him. Left hand about a wedding, and Gidry delivers. It is a strike call. Batting 276, Jastrzemski. 16 homers, 79 runs batted in. This is his 18th season with the Red Sox. Gidry kicks and deals. Here's a long belt to right. Maybe fair, maybe foul. It is a home run for Yusinski. And Boston beats one to nothing. First baseline made no mistake about it. 
his motion. He went hot. Strike out. Here's Pinella. He's bounced to third and uh, single past the third baseman, Brohammer. Torres has now walked two and struck out four. He's allowed two hits. A double by Rivers and a single by Pinella. Pinella up again now. one nothing. Boston leading sixth inning at Fenway Park in Boston. Is a fly ball. It's a right center field. It's deep. Lynn is going back. He's there now waiting. He has it. Lynn gets a good jump on the ball, and he was there. That was the hardest hit ball the Yankees have had all afternoon. The dead center field, those of you who know Fenway Park, the grass circles out, and then there's a piece of pie of ground out there, and Lynn drifted back into the piece of pie, put up the arm, and took it very easily. Let's pause five seconds for stations to identify themselves on this the CBS radio network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. He cuts the... going to equate Reggie Jackson with Babe Ruth, but when I was a kid, when Babe took a cut like that and missed right here in Fenway Park, that was the most exciting thing because you knew on the next pitch, maybe, and that's what the Red Sox fans are worried about right now, and Reggie's always dealt in a sense of drama. Now the 2-1 delivery, he swings. and he, he's feeling gimpy. That's exactly where he got it early in the year. In fact, he had he was out. Then he got a hamstring. Right. That was in a series of unfortunate injuries that the Yankees had in the middle of the year that they went into a tailspin. And then as though to accommodate the Yankees, the Red Sox had seven guys on the gimp list. Hobson with his chips and his knees. Uh, Rice hit his foot. Yaz in the back. Boylison uh, jammed the foot on the last game before the All-Star game. For a while, it was uh, who's on the field and who's in the hospital for both clubs. And now Bucky seems to have recovered at least well enough to get from the batter's box. And the tension to 
starts again. There's still two Yanks on. Well, he got some ethyl chloride to uh, freeze some stuff on that uh, ankle. He's back in there, choking the bat, waiting on a 1-1 pitch from Torres. Two men on, two men out, two nothing Boston. And the pitch on the way. He swings. There's a fly ball to left field. Yastrzemski looking back, and that oh, one is gone. A three-run homer for Bucky Dent, and the Yankees have the lead. Into the screen, Bucky did. It's a three-run homer for the Yankees, and they go out in front of the Boston Red Sox here at Fenway Park. Very still and a quiet crowd at Fenway right now, with the Yankees leading four to two. Stanley checks his time with Fisk, ready to go to action again. Wind up the pitch. Jackson swings high, fly ball, deep center. Lynn going back, 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 and that one is gone. A home run for Jackson. In the center field seat, it is 5-2 to two favor of New York as the Yankees going to their old trademark, the home run. To a master lead here at Fenway in the playoff game. That ball hit by Reggie straight away. A towering fly ball in the center field issue. Jackson went back to the bench. I presume that's George Steinbrenner sitting right to the left of the Yankee dugout. He reached over and they gave the I slap you in happiness type greeting. Set by Gossage, the Yankee right-handed deals. There's a base hit to center field. One team can be the winner. One team will go to Kansas City. One team will go home. Hobson waits on deck for Boston. Gossett pitches. Lynn swings. Base hit. Left field. Stepping in. Burleson on third and Remy on first. The pitch is a ball low. Ball one. Carlton Fisk is the next batter. If Yaz gets the hit, Ernie, you won't have to say a word. Five to four. The Yankees lead it. They took the lead in the seventh inning. On a three-run homer by Bucky Dent. They've held it since then. Gossage ready. Delivers. There's a pop-up. Over near third, shoot in the game. Nettles is under it. He has it, and the Yankees are the champions. Nettles catches the foul ball. Yastrzemski is out, and the season is over. The Yankees go on to Kansas City.